Today we are going to talk about the story This is Jody's Fawn written by Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings. This is a simple enough story but with its theme it becomes more than just a story. The story can be treated as a commentary on our irresponsible attitude towards nature, on how we are using up natural resources and how we should be more responsible about that. It reminds us that we should take a step backwards and consider about paying back for whatever we have been taking from the nature. The author Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings was an American author and she lived in rural Florida. The story This is Jody's Phone is also based in rural Florida. The story is actually an extract from her novel The Yearling. The novel is about a boy who adopted an orphan fawn. This book won Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1939. Several movies have been made on that novel. I will leave links of those movies in the description box. MGM's Children's Matinee presents the famous story of a boy named Jody, a baby deer and a big, beautiful land, the yearling. Come along with Jody on a thrilling hunt for a wild bear. Join in a brawling free-for-all and discover a baby deer deep in the forest, a little pet all your own, a yearling who gets into all sorts of mischief. That settles it. That deer has got to go. Go! And don't you ever go back! Don't you ever! MGM. Let us now get to the story. The story opens with a pre-note, where we learn that Jody's father was bitten by a rattlesnake. To draw out the poison from his blood, he killed a doe and used its liver and heart. Now you may ask a question. How could a doe's liver and heart be used to draw out poison from the blood. Actually, it's a myth believed in rural Florida. There is no scientific backing to this particular mention. As the doe was killed, the fawn became motherless. Even after Jody returned home with his father, he could not stop thinking about the fawn. Jody had an emotional conversation with his father and got his permission to get the fawn and bring it home. However, his father wanted him to get his mother's permission. Jody's mother was reluctant to give him permission. She was also worried about the fact that he wanted to go back to that same part of the forest where his father was bitten by a rattlesnake. However, Doc Wilson, an acquaintance of his father, gave him his support. He said that nothing in this world comes quite free and Jody's mother had to give him permission. However, she said that Jody had to feed the fawn his own share of milk. Milwill, another acquaintance of his father, offered to accompany Jody to go and search for the fawn. He went to the forest on his horse. However, when he reached that particular spot of the forest, where the doe was killed, he did not wish Millville to accompany him anymore because he did not wish him to witness the emotional outburst he was sure to have when he found the fawn. After Millville had left, Jody started his search for the fawn. He saw buzzards or turkey vultures feasting on the doe carcass. He also noticed paw marks of big cats and was worried whether the fawn had already been dead. However, after a brief search, he found the fawn. Jody was extremely excited to see the fawn. He lifted it and held it close to his heart. The fawn also accepted Jody. Jody was careful about not to let the fawn see its mother's carcass, otherwise it might bleed and kick. Jody carried the fawn for some time, 
then put it down to catch his breath. He remembered his father saying that a fawn would follow if it had first been carried. To see whether it actually followed him, he started away, and then he noticed that the fawn also started following him. This way, gradually, he reached home with the fawn, sometimes carrying it and sometimes letting it follow him. As the fawn was afraid of the stairs, Jody carried it into his house. Later, he gave some milk to the fawn to drink. The fawn could not drink milk directly from the tumbler. So Jody dipped his finger in the milk and let the fawn suck his finger. He dipped his finger in the milk again and let the fawn suck it. As the fawn sucked his finger, he gradually lowered it and held it below the level of the milk. The fawn drank the entire milk and both the fawn and Jody were content. So the story tells us about a boy's sympathy, love and compassion for a motherless fawn. But it also teaches us a great lesson. The story tells us that we have to be more responsible in our attitude towards nature. With our superior power and intelligence, we are using up natural resources, but they are surprised that we have to pay one way or another.